it is part a, a course that's why it is now extended for mrcs okay so uh our motto is always we always emphasize on the unlocking the secrets of mrcs always remember mrcs uh, is an international degree and it's uh, whoever uh, and who is uh, uh, trying to pursue this degree he has to fight uh, for a long period of time but if you know the tricks and uh, tips uh, then uh, this degree will be very easier for you that's why uh, we always uh, emphasize on the unlocking the secrets of mrcs okay so would you please go next dr hasan Hello. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Dr. Nahid Hassan uh, I have done uh, MRCS in 2023 September session KL Center just one year back and doing FCPS as well as a residence of BSO and uh, medical officer of the same department working for the last uh, four years uh, in the department of eology at Bangladesh Sheikh Mohammed Medical University. And uh, Dr. Hassan is with yes. me and he is one of the youngest star for MRCS because uh, all of you know that who are uh, maximum of uh, our participants are my ex-student already you know that and even Dr. Hassan is my also ex-student and I choose him uh, after seeing his punctuality and he's, and he's very energetic uh, that's why whenever I become uh, very busy I can't reply someone but he's always able to replace me that's why I totally believe on him uh, he he can just replace me. So he is Dr. Hastad. Would you please introduce yourself, Dr. Hastad? Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Ritad, for giving me this floor. I'm Dr. Hastad, uh, with you, along with Dr. Ritad Baya, and I passed my MBBS from Chirong Medical College, and I, uh, last year I have completed this MRCS Part B exam uh, in 2023 September diet, and uh, I am I have done uh, FCPS in 2022, and I and uh, passed the entrance exam in MS residency course in 2022 as well. And I have got uh, my GMC registration six months back. So this is my all about. Okay. Okay. So both of us are uh, conducting the MRCS OSCE. Okay. Please go to the next. Okay. So start our journey as you are here. Uh, to know, uh, to have the orientation of the MRCS OSCE. So what does it mean? So O is for work, A is for structured, C for clinical, and E for examination. That means overall structure, clinical examination. So this is type of an exam. You will have to check. Uh... Hello? Yes. Yes, yes. Here you will have, uh, here you will have to uh, face so many uh, examiners. And all the exams are, all the stations are oral. There is nothing to write in the uh, exam hall, except a few uh, particular station, not the station, particular uh, part like in the world listing. And those things will be discussed later on. But all the questions is um, oral, viva. And it's a very structured exam. Because uh, in the MRCS uh, OSCE exam, if you, we, I do believe, I do believe if you just simply follow the structure, it will be very easier to pass, pass the exam. It's not a big deal. That's why it is always structure and clinical exam. So you'll have to have a very clear knowledge on the clinical aspect, like the examination, like the procedural stations, even the uh, knowledge part, you'll have to some clear concept. Go to the next, Dr. Hasta. Okay, so where you are getting from where you can pursue this degree, the, this exam is called uh, intercollegiate exam, and four of the colleges are giving you uh, this degree. So one is Royal College of England, uh, Edinburgh, uh, uh, Glasgow, and another one is Ireland. So you will get your final result uh, from school. Like you have uh, passed Emerson's part A in the England center. Like, uh, and now you are trying to uh, give your, uh, or you are trying to seek for the MRCS Part B exam, but there is no available slot for the MRC, uh, Royal College of England. So what can you do? Simply go for the any college, no problem. 
because the degrees are always this MRC degree is equivalent for every single college. So you can simply go for the uh, uh, Ireland or Glasgow. So always remember the final MRC degree will provided by the exam you have uh, acquired in the part B. That's so like you have done your MRC part in the uh, England, but you have uh, done your uh, MRC part B in the Edinburgh. Then the final result or MRC degree will be given by the uh, local Edinburgh. That's the thing. Okay, Dr. Nastat, next. Okay, so what is the uh, eligibility for the MRCS Part B exam seat for them? So one thing, primary medical education, uh, and, and basically all of you know that who has passed the MRCS Part A, you, will have, you had to sub, submit this one. So it's a primary medical uh, qualification, definitely. And the second one, you will have to have a MRCS Part A. So without uh, passing the MRCS Part A, we can go for the MRCS Part B. It's a very lo uh, logical thing. Okay, so what are the things you'll have to know? What will be your MSS part B, OSCE structure? One is exam uh, station and knowledge and the skill part. So total exam stations, uh, there are 17 performance stations, two preparation stations and two race stations. So total you'll have to face 17 stations. And along the 17 stations, you will have two prepared stations. So ultimately 19 stations and you will have to have 10 minutes for every single station. But this uh, and along these 19 stations, you might get one race stations, two race stations or three race stations. It depends on the uh, center, how many uh, participants they can uh, accommodate uh, each slot. Like uh, there are uh, 19 uh, examinee, 19 candidates are present to uh, give the exam in a morning session, morning shift. So there are 19 uh, stations, there are 19 stations. So 17 stations for the performing and two stations for the, two stations for the people stations. So they will give you, they will provide you two more stations. Ultimately, there are 20, one stations so uh, when you are going for the examination like before performing the anatomy stations you might get one station and this station is a rest station you don't have to do anything so you just have to take some rest these stations so what is the benefit of giving uh, a 21 station like the rest stations are to only accommodate the candidates like you have seven stations to perform stations but if you can uh, if the station or if the center can provide you 21 station 21 stations they can accommodate 21 candidates at a time that's the main thing that's why they will provide you the race stations like they want you to accommodate 22 stations at a time so they might give you three stations three race stations this is the thing why race station is giving this is, is given. So another is knowledge station, eight knowledge stations, and nine performance stations, and two preparatory stations. We'll discuss these things later on uh, in elaborative way. Okay, Dr. Hasna. So Dr. Hasna, would you please continue from here? Yes. I am here to support you. Uh, okay, so these are the breakdowns of uh, knowledge stations where you will get three anatomy, three critical care stations and two pathology. And these are the eight uh, individual stations or knowledge portion. And in terms of skills, you will have two history taking stations, three clinical examination stations, and two procedural stations where you will have to perform uh, two minor procedures and two communication stations. One usually with patients or patient colleague, uh, patients relatives and another station would be from uh, would be to contact or communicate uh, with your colleague. It can be your consultant or it can be your register to refer or to discharge or to update regarding a patient. Okay, so for the subcontinent students, the skill portion is a bit difficult if there is no proper practice. Okay, most of the candidates who fails in the exam uh, actually. They uh, roughly, you can say the most, um, the maximum of the percentage usually fail 
in the skill portion. Okay, so we will discuss uh, about those things. What are the key aspects uh, that you will have to look for uh, if you want to do a, or if you want to carry a good marks in knowledge and skill portion. Okay, so <laughs> this is it. You will get. 20 for each station and your whole exam will allot you 340 marks. Okay, from the knowledge portion. So we will discuss this one. So how the real time exam setup of the knowledge portion is actually divided. Okay, so the thing is, in case of, uh, we know from our previous discussion that there are eight knowledge stations and all of the stations will carry one individual room or it can be uh, one big room and it can be make it can be divided into separate partitions by giving some uh, screening like this way and it varies actually center to center okay so in most of the uh, knowledge stations first of all you will find a room that you have seen in one picture in a previous slide that you have seen that there is a door and on the door there is a question paper okay there is a question paper that is hanging on the door and then examiner are trying to uh, so the candidates are uh, going through the question paper and they will have one minute to read out the stem and then after reading out the stem then he or she will be allowed to enter into the station and in case of every knowledge station he will find a table like this and on the opposite side of the table there would be uh, there would be an examiner sitting over there and there would be another chair over here. So ultimately, he will ask you that to sit down there and then he will, uh, the examiner will conventionally will ask you that whether you have read the stem properly, which is hanging outside of the room. So if you say yes, then uh, the examiner will proceed for this station and if you say no i have not completely or i have not uh, gone through this uh, station well or this question well then he or she will tell you that uh, okay so here is the stem again you will find the same exactly same scenario which is which has been given outside the room will be same scenario or same page you will find it on the examiner's table and if you ask for that he will give it to you so for reading the stem outside the room you will have one minute for that and in case of knowledge station and after entering into the station you will have nine minutes for that and in the room you will have only one examiner there and then if you ask to read out the stem again that will consume the time from the nine minutes but there is uh, nothing to be worried about because if you are well aware about this knowledge station or if your preparation is well enough or up to the mark then it is very much possible to finish a particular knowledge station whether it is anatomy physiopathology or critical care you can finish it within five to six minutes or high seven minutes so it's better or it's wise to ask the examiner uh, the question paper again so that you are confident because there might be some lab finding, extra finding, ECG finding or anything can be given uh, or CBC finding, anything can be given on the stem. So it's very difficult to read the whole stem and remember the lab findings and within one minute then enter in or, or then face the examiner. That is really difficult. So it is very wise if you ask for the question paper again. Okay, then you will have uh, nine minutes then rapidly the examiner will uh, enter into the question then you will try to answer if you can't answer then you can uh, ask the examiner that uh, can i skip this or can i come to this later on this is one thing and another one is if you give a wrong answer then uh, some of the examiners may give you mark zero or uh, or one or the or the less mark than the full marks but some of the examiner will ask you what else, what else, what might be the other things like this way, if the examiner is helpful. So this is completely dependent on the examiner, but you must try to hit, hit all the questions. Okay, so if you can't one, uh, can't, if you're not able to answer one question, so don't 
do uh, or don't harm or don't uh, delay your time so just rapidly that i can't answer this right now so can i come to this later like this way you will uh, try to go to the last question of your station then it will come back okay that is the thing uh, commonly for anatomy so if i uh, talk about anatomy at first then if you enter into the station then you will find four or five pictures uh, either on the table or these pictures can be hanging on the wall so it will depend on the exam uh, exam scenario okay so in our diet uh, i have given in 2023 september kuala lumpur so where in uh, two stations the pictures are on the table and in one another station the picture laminated large picture the pictures are hanging on the wall okay so whatever it is the examiner will ask you uh, uh, or show you a picture can you see this one so what do you see this this structure could you please identify this one and then he will ask you two or three few uh, questions right, regarding that okay so uh, ultimately from all of the questions you will get uh, almost in case of anatomy uh, 15 to 20 questions okay and we will show this one in case of anatomy uh, you will have three stations 20 each and that will carry 60 marks and you will have one minute to read the stem. Then you will have nine minutes to perform or finish the anatomy station. You will find one examiner and almost four to five pictures. It will depend on the station. And against every picture, you will get four or five questions. So that will uh, conclude the station within 16 to 20 questions. Okay. But in case of breakdown of anatomy, usually the complete 20 marks is on your knowledge usually in case of anatomy there is no marks on professionalism or there is no marks on communication if you can't understand a particular question of your examiner you can directly ask sorry i couldn't get it or could you please repeat this one or uh, couldn't i couldn't understand this question so if you ask uh, the examiner politely so examiner will rephrase or paraphrase that question so that you can understand the question what is asking, what it is asking for actually okay so there is no uh, harm to that or there is no negative marking to that okay so this will not cause harm to your professionalism as well and if you can get all the questions of anatomy you will get 20 of uh, 20 out of 20 and it is very possible to get more than 55 or 60 in case of anatomy if you can answer all of the questions so to tailor your preparation as you have you will have three stations the head neck and neuro anatomy is the most important stations and almost in 90 to 90 in, in case in every diet you will have at least one station from head neck and neuro anatomy okay that will be it in some stations like in august kuala lumpur under edinburgh there are two head neck uh, one head neck one neuro anatomy stations uh, station out of three and another one was from Supremes. and in another day there are two but another one was from lower limb so ultimately head neck and neuroanatomy will be in your exam in most in nine occasion out of ten so ultimately you can make it for sure and then the most imp important one are extremity so inferior extremity and superior extremity there are some particular things like in in case of inferior extremity the front of the thigh back of the uh, popliteal fossa and foot. These are the three common regions where the question usually can be asked. And in case of superior extremity, you can find the axilla and you can find the extensive surface of the forearm or any DSA like these things. And in case of thorax, the most important thing is posterior mediastinum, which is the most important thing. And you can find uh, heart and interior of the heart is another important thing. But you will be shown different aspect of heart and ultimately the pictures from MacPins are for your concept but the thing is what i uh, say to our sports student that is uh, in case of anatomy you will not find the question uh, the picture it is common but you will find the questions that are common okay so you will not uh, never ever be able to uh, make the anatomy pictures common but if you have a proper concept uh, like uh, what are the structures to be identified suppose in case of axillary dissection or in case of a brachial plexus picture so ultimately if you have the ideas of how to uh, differentiate or how to demarcate or how to identify the structure or what are the things you will be asked right in case of hand you will not be asked about all of the things right in case of you will find, find 
50 or 60 levelings okay but roughly you will be able to you will be asked to identify radial artery ulnar artery median nerve these things and common major tendons like these things okay and just have an overview or this create a visual memory create a visual memory so obviously if you don't have the picture is in common so that you can have the uh, you can uh, you can be able the you can be uh, able the, to identify the structure so that you can answer the follow up questions because uh, follow up questions is very easy and hopefully all of you have passed uh, MRCS part A and you have vastly read this anatomy in MRCS part A so there is nothing to read the theory rather in case of part B you need to uh, give the concentration or focus to uh, identify the specific structures and another one is abdomen in uh, in KL as well, the abdomen actually came here and they gave the emphasis on surface marking and a CT scan and uh, cadaveric uh, cross section of lumbar one level. Okay, so these are the common, quite common questions. If there is uh, the question is from abdomen and another question is from uh, liver. Okay, so different views of liver. So, you'll be, and uh, if you, uh, these are the sequence of importance. Okay, so if we uh, start from the sequence that that is head neck infrastructure the question will come like this way in previous two or three years this is a sample station uh, okay don't worry uh, uh, no one will be asked the question okay uh, Ratna Kapu is here so can you please read, uh, read out the stand Dr. Ratna Kapu yeah a 22 year old man is attracted by a dog and suffers laceration to the dorsum of his left hand. On exploration of his wound in the theater, he is found to have several damaged tendon. Your register is assisting you in theater while you perform the tendon repair. Yes, this is the line or this is the para or the inter, uh, instruction you will find outside the room. And after entering into the room, the examiner will show you. Uh, can you look, uh, Mr. Gentleman? Uh, look at the picture. He will first ask you about your candidate number because you he has to, he have to give the, uh, some marks on you. And then he will ask you uh, look at the picture number A, uh, gentleman. What is A? What is B? He will obviously he will not ask everything, but he will ask two or uh, three things. What are written on the checklist? Only he will ask about that, and he will ask uh, two or three follow up questions against that particular structure okay then he will take you to the picture number b and picture number c like this way okay so in most of the cases uh look at here here in picture number a identify a to e then he will ask you about uh, second question about b third question about the joint and fourth question about the original insertion of that particular b tendon okay like that way and in most of the cases the answer of the anatomy question is usually one word to maximum one line. Okay, not more than that. So exactly to the point answer. So that is it about anatomy. So from you guys, do you have any question or any confusion regarding understanding of anatomy or how the anatomy station actually go on? Anyone? Any remarks? Okay, so we can. Okay, Dr. Diffus, are you there? Yes, uh, Dr. Hasan, thank you yes. for uh, you the explanation. Like uh, yes, yes, thank you. So, thank you for explanation regarding the uh, exam for anatomy. Okay, I, you have already mentioned every single thing very perfectly, uh, but I would like to give some input along uh, all of this information you have already given. So, guys, just in a simpler story, you have you will have eight stations from the anatomy, uh, from the whole uh, knowledge portion. Three from the anatomy, three from the critical care, and two from the uh, pathology. All as you remember, the most easiest part to acquire the mark is nothing but the anatomy. Always remember, is the most easiest part. 
because there is no more no new stations no new questions you will get in the exam so the the uh, thing like the thorax the th human thorax is not changing right so human lower limb is not changing the thing you used to learn from the medical first year still you will face the same portion in the emergency OSCE exam but the most important thing is you have to remember the question pattern is different like in our medical uh, first year we just used to uh, learn about the extensor aspect learn we, we just blindly used to learn those things but in your exam they will show you the tendons and they will ask you the relative questions or the function of this tendon what is the insertion or the uh, uh what you what is the nerve supply of the, this muscle like this they will ask you so this is the best or this is the easiest part where you can acquire the mark one thing from the anatomy it is everything will be common for you except the pictures guys i'm telling you everything is confused for you except the pictures because you won't get the exact pictures so how would you take your preparation always you'll have to look for so many pictures i i can remember while i was just preparing i used to open so many pictures from so many books so you'll have to have a proper idea one of my uh, uh, colleague is very senior to me he used to prepare with me so, so he used to see the pictures only from the book he uh, followed so those are the simple pictures only limited pictures he could answer every single thing properly but whenever i opened a cadaver picture like jeremy i opened him uh, the book and found a few pictures in front of him he couldn't mention he couldn't identify any of these structures but whenever i uh, uh, identified a structure particular structure and i showed him uh, like uh, doctor uh, this is the picture this is the tendon i identified this after that he could answer every single thing perfectly so he has proper orientation he has everything so the main uh, difficulties is he is not oriented with a different type of picture so you'll have to have a proper knowledge regarding so many pictures if you can practice like this sir it would be really difficult for you and uh, always we used to say that not only the anatomy for every single station from the uh, knowledge part if you can answer perfectly and the uh, uh, station will be completed within five to six minutes so is the easiest part uh, uh, you will uh, do better in the entry part as uh, just it depends on your practice because you'll be so you'll be shown so many horrible pictures like head neck because you'll three you'll get three stations definitely one one station from the head neck and if you are lucky enough you might get two stations from the head neck and definitely another station from the lower limb or upper limb lower limb is more important than the upper limb if you just simply go for the previous recalls previous stations recent stations you'll get three stations covered by all these or three uh, uh three uh, uh, topics like head neck uh, and thorax is coming with the head neck as well and upper limb or lower limb and newer is coming from the abdomen which is a, a recent type so a few stations are from Aruna and told uh, with uh, our candidates who had the exam recently and we have collected all the anatomy questions uh, as well as the questions from the abdomen. So whatever, uh, you will have to remember the questions are same, but you will get the newer pictures. So practice as much as you can new pictures. Thank you, Dr. Hasan. Okay. Okay, so regarding critical care, yeah. uh, like the same way, uh, can you, uh, everyone hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. So regarding critical care, like other uh, knowledge stations, you will find uh, three critical care stations, and where you will find uh, one minute to read out the same, same as the other knowledge stations and regarding uh, after entering into that you will have nine minutes to face the examiner then only one examiner will be there and you will be shown uh, two or three pictorials ecg chest x-ray abdominal x-ray or it might be 
CT scan, it might be ECG, it might be, uh, these are the things uh, you will be shown depending on the station. Okay. And then you will get uh, 12 to 15 questions highest from this particular, from a specific critical care uh, station. But one thing is, if you can answer all of the questions, just like anatomy, you will not get 20 out of 20 because there are uh, four marks reserved for professionalism in this particular station and four marks in each station. That means uh, your critical care will carry 12 marks for professionalism. Like here, the thing is actually, uh, we'll come to this. Okay. Suppose here, this type of uh, critical care stations, you will be shown a case scenario outside the room. Then the examiner is asking you some questions. This is not like an interview that he is asking and you are answering, not like that way. This is like, this will go like this way that you are discussing about a case with your examiner or with your consultant. Like that way, this station will proceed. This is not like an interview, okay? So if the examiner ask, ask you that, oh, what do you see in this image? So if you say that uh, considering these, these, these findings, um, I see uh, uh, my extra findings is like this one. Okay, so don't give the answer in one word or two words. Okay, so try to make a complete sentence, one or two complete sentence that will enhance your professionalism in case of critical care. Can anyone read out the stem, please? Mr. Smith, yes. a 62 year man, underwent right hemicolectomy for right sided colonic growth. On first post-operative day, patient is agitated and confused. Vitally, his uh, heart rate 120, uh, blood pressure 100 by 70, a partial pressure of oxygen 88% and at room temperature. Uh, what is this? Okay. Uh, so, urinary out. Output. Uh, urine output 90 ml and last uh, eight hour fluid chart. Uh, he is um, seven liter on IV crystallite plus colloid, four liter of uh, them are normal saline. Okay, so uh, based on the station, uh, the examiner may ask you first that what are your expected physical findings, right? So ultimately, you already know and you have already studied. The, during your preparation that this is a, a station of uh, fluid overload or pulmonary edema. Okay, so ultimately, if you say, uh, my physical finding is this, 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 angles, neck, vein, puffy face, this, uh, and uh, breathlessness, decreases into those things. But if he, uh, you have said like that way, and another candidate has said that, uh, yes, Mr. Smith, uh, who is on seven liter of fluid in a post in post operative period and his heart rate he's tachycardic and hypotensive so considering this condition uh, his probable physical findings could be facial flushing engorged neck pain breathlessness bilateral basal precipitation like this way so which candidate will get more marks in case of professionalism obviously the second one right so ultimately these will carry you four marks and in the long run the 12 marks is a very big thing Okay, and this can uh, just define your the border of pass and fail because most of the candidates who fail in the uh, skill or knowledge, whatever it is, they uh, we have seen that most of the candidates actually fail just the margin of one mark or two mark or three marks. Highest three marks I have seen most of the cases. Okay, so uh, if this kind of expensive and lengthy exam where you have to struggle mentally and physically as well. Uh, and this type of exam is uh, it, it is very difficult to appear in this kind of exam twice or thrice, right? So ultimately, just because of body gesture, making a uh, professionalism, giving expression, head nodding, those things, or giving one or two extra word with your uh, sentence will not make you harm. Ultimately, so this will enhance your professionalism and ultimately you will carry more marks. Because rest of the 48 marks, if you go through the books, you will be able to answer in no doubt, right? But this is a thing that you are discussing in the case with your examiner, right? So ultimately you will have, and whenever and, uh, the candidate 
the instruction you will find outside the room and if you forget what was the blood pressure what was the uh, heart rate what was the saturation if you forget those it is uh, very natural you will obviously forget those things in the exam pressure right so ultimately you can ask the examiner that i want to uh, have the stem again then he will show you and then uh, he will try to uh, ask you the question sequentially okay so usually you will have almost 40 to 45 stations but commonly we can say one station from trauma another station from perioperative management like uh, perioperative assessment or postoperative pain management fluid management nutrition uh, in a surgical patient or uh, anesthesia or pain relief station these things are usually common and in case of metabolic conditions you will like fi you will find a respiratory failure uh, new cv line or you will find a renal failure those things or electrolyte imbalance these stations are quite common so you have segment and if you go through the segment wise you will find a particular station from each one and okay in case of pathology the same way but pathology uh, in my words i can say this is a nasty word okay so ultimately uh, if you want to pass in the knowledge station anatomy and critical care are the punch stations where you will get 120 marks right so ultimately in case of knowledge you will get 160 but on average there are actually 112 to you can say 115 or 117 these are the general pass mark for knowledge portion on user and and from anatomy and critical care you will have 120 and if you get 110 at least from this one it is very obvious and very much possible to obtain more than 100 in anatomy and critical care okay so if you get those things the pressure from the pathology will be released on but that doesn't mean you will not treat pathology. Obviously, you will give emphasis on pathology as well, right? So uh, having difficulty or facing a very too bad pathology stations may cause you fail in the knowledge station as well, right? So that's why you must give emphasis on pathology. So you will get one examiner, you have one minute to read out the stem outside the room, then you will have to perform the station for nine minutes, then the question will uh, or the beginning of the station will be the same but try to focus that the beginning or make sure the beginning of the station is really good okay otherwise if you uh, start a worse station there is less chance of having this station as a good station okay so try to make the station uh, or, uh, in a perfect way start the session in a perfect way right so you'll be shown pictorials or you can be shown histopathology report or even, okay based on the station and uh, just like critical care you will have 12 to 15 questions from each particular pathology station and here you will find malignancy related one station Carcinoma, 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 prostate, renal cell carcinoma, gastric carcinoma, like you'll find gastrointestinal stromal tumor, parotid carcinoma, breast carcinoma. So there are almost uh, 12, 13, 14 uh, malignancy related patients. So one would be malignancy related, and another one is infection related, like you can have abscess, you can have osteomyelitis or you can have septic arthritis station, or you can have actinomycosis, which is coming very frequently. Like this way, you can find this station, okay? So you can divide them, and ultimately you can have a better idea for which station will be there, okay? Like in case of pathologists, suppose here, this is uh, one kind of station where you will find a large uh, scenario, so many lab findings, so many vitals are given there, it is very difficult to read the stem within one minute and remember the one. And after remembering the one within one minute and to face the examiner, that is very difficult. So if you can't, you can really ask the examiner to find out the things. And in case of pathology, we don't have uh, usually any marks on professionalism, but it's better to show professionalism so that your examiner has better impression on you. Okay. So any uh Yes, Dr. Rishabh, would you like to say something about knowledge station of critical care? And okay. Uh, 
Dr. Dr. Hassel, thank you very much. Uh, so all the station and the critical care as well. And so we have you have done almost the uh, knowledge portion. So just I would like to give some input. So guys, what is the pass mark? So pass mark varies. Uh, it normally varies. Uh, it depends on your uh, fellow candidates who are going to appear the exam on the same day. Like uh, like uh, in the care center, there are three to four days, considered three to four days, the exam is going on. The pass mark uh, differs one day to second day, second day to third day, and the fourth day as well. And definitely uh, the pass mark depends on the candidates who are going to the, appear and give the exam in the same day with you. So it depends. Okay. But one thing I always like to say, if you get more than 115, then you are secured. Like most of the time, I used to say, I used to see the pass mark varies. Like it could be 108. Even I have seen the 106 out of 160, right? Because we do have eight stations. So out of eight stations, every single station comprises 20 marks. So over 160. So the pass mark depends or uh, varies. Like it could be 108, 110, 112 as well. So if you are get 115, then the you are secured. 100% almost. So how would you gain the 115 marks? So I always like to say, I already mentioned that anatomy is the easiest part. So if you have a clear preparation, very strong preparation on anatomy, very easy to acquire more than, more than 50 or 55 marks out of 60. And every single question from the KTL care will be common for you. There are only 40 stations only 40 stations and out of 40 stations you will get three stations in your exam and no question is uncommon to you because all the questions have been included in our books whatever you are following the materials every single question has been included so every single question has been updated and you will have to just deliver in your real exam so out of 40 stations you will you'll get three stations so if you can simply deliver the stations it's very easy to get 50 marks out of 60. so you found 50 from the anatomy and 50 from the uh ptl care so you got already 100 and rest of the 40 marks will get you'll get from the 40 marks from the pathology but i would say pathology itself is a difficult topic as well because we are the surgeons we are very much habituated with the anatomy as well as the ptl care but not with the pathology but Another important and, and another important thing I have to mention from the pathology that is you will get newer station as well as the new questions from the pathology. If legal time, if you simply go for the previous recalls, you will get few new questions have been included. And those questions are not, not similar with us. So if you don't get the uh, if you don't get the station that is known to you, that is unknown to you, then it is very uh, normal to lose your mark. So it's a, it's, it acts as a trump card from the pathology. So what I always try to say to my candidates, I always ask them to have very clear preparation, very strong preparation from the anatomy and career care. No one will be able to uh, make you fail in the, uh, in the knowledge portion. I can challenge you. No one. Okay, so one thing before conclusion, going to the conclusion from the uh, knowledge portion, one thing I would like to mention from the KTL care. Dr. Hassel, could you please go back to the KTL care portion of the KTL care? Yes. In the previous slide. This one? Okay, uh, the question, question station, question slide. Oh, okay, guys, have a look on this station so the only from the look have a look on the candidate structures candidate instruction so this is the question that will be hanged in your door outside and you will be given only one me to read the station to read the candidate instruction and have a look there are so many things have been mentioned here this is the, uh, mr smith 62 years old he has a operative history 
past post trouble day patient is confused patient bite us so many things have been given here and there is one thing that is fluid chart shown he is uh, he got 7 liter iv crystaller and colloid 4 liter of the normal set okay you have only one me to read this then only one me so is, you are so many nervous you are extremely nervous while you are standing in front of the door so so how much of this station is able to keep in being? at least i i couldn't so it's very logical to forget every single thing so you will enter into the room like you have read the questions you didn't get which station this one you don't get any knowledge in your brain you just simply could memorize the patient's name and age, the wider history, and you didn't uh, uh, can remember any other thing. Now you enter into the room. The examiner asks you, did you read the station? Yes, definitely you read the station. Would I start? Yes, definitely you will start. Then the first question, what are your expected physical findings? Okay, so you didn't, you are not sure about your diagnosis. Because one minute is very, very less amount of time to reach the diagnosis. So if you are not confirmed about your diagnosis, how it is possible to answer this? What are the expected physical findings? Someone tell me, is it possible, Dr. Jaffin? Dr. Jaffin, is it possible to memorize or tell this thing? No, Maya. Yes, definitely no. So this is the most important thing for the care care you have to remember before answering the station, before starting the answering the station, just finalize your diagnosis. If you can diagnose your station, then you will be able to go for the subsequent questions. So, so what will you do in this station? I would suggest you just take one minute in your in your uh, in front of the door. Whenever you enter into the room, the examiner will definitely will ask you, have you read the station? Yes, sir, I read the station. Do you, uh, and then ask your examiner, sir, I would like to read the station again. So you have nine minutes to perform the station. I already mentioned you. If you are well prepared, five or six minutes is enough to complete all the stations perfectly, all the questions, cover all the questions perfectly. So take some time. Just finalize your diagnosis. Sir, I'd like to see my question again. And definitely they will provide you because there will be another question uh, paper in front of the examiner. They will provide you the question paper. Then read properly again once, twice, thrice. How much? It depends on you. How much time do you need? Go for the uh, final diagnosis. And when you reach your final diagnosis, go for the subsequent questions. Nothing else. And ultimately, if you can reach your final diagnosis, those things will be covered within the four or five minutes, five or six minutes, very perfectly. No problem. So this is the main thing you will have to remember for the KTL care. And Dr. Hasnath already mentioned all the other things perfectly. Thank you very much. Go, please continue, Dr. Hasnath. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please continue. Uh, if I say wrong diagnosis, then what will be happened? Yes. Mark okay. It? Okay. So. 40 questions we you do have 40 uh, stations in your book and all the stations are different if you can't reach your final diagnosis it is very logical to go for the wrong answer for the subsequent questions that's why for performing for better performance in the ktl care you'll have to reach your diagnosis and i can assure you if if you simply go for the questions if you understand the question and you will come to your final diagnosis and it's, it will be very handy or easier for you, no problem. And definitely, and if you can reach your diagnosis, you won't able to pass in the station. Right. You won't able to pass your station. So always emphasize on the diagnosis. And there are only 40 diagnosis and, and those things are very close to the question paper. If you can simply have a look on the question paper, you can finalize your diagnosis, no problem but you'll have to have a proper preparation. Is it clear, Dr. Jaffrey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Okay, so the main thing is, uh, yes, uh, if you are not sure about your diagnosis or, or if you tell the misdiagnosis, uh, it's better to say uh, that I want to take or I have to have some time on the uh, stem 
then it's better to solve because all of the questions you already know. Okay, so you have to determine which station is this from your preparation. Then, if it is not common as well, just think about that and calm down. You will have some residual knowledge and try to express your residual knowledge to the try to deliver that in the English form to your examiner. That would be okay. Okay, so this is the thing, and how excellence for MRCS actually can help to improve you in the knowledge segment. Okay, because you know that we are going to launch an intensive care long batch who are trying to appear of the exam after March and onwards. Okay, so those who are taking part in January, they can also avail with us and they can have the skill portion of life as well. So here's the knowledge portion. We will have 24 live interactive class. That will be concept clearing. And if you have any confusion, all of the things would be, uh, or all of the confusion would be cleared out in the live sessions. Okay, and these sessions are actually uh, almost four to five hours long. And we usually cover, we can cover at least uh, usually five or four stations within five to four hours. Okay, so that is a very long class, but you have to uh, have the patience to ace the MRCS of the exam. And we try to focus to clear the concept. That is what it is. And we will have 15 live interactive mocks and where we will discuss usually the previous recall that we have gathered from our previous candidates. And almost we have, we had uh, 20, uh, almost 30 candidates who have appeared in uh, Kuala Lumpur and some Indian, uh, India and almost in August and September diet, basically. And most of them have successfully overcome this particular uh, exam and we have gathered and, and tried to collect all of the questions after uh, their exam day and we had to try to compile this uh, these new questions and what are the examiner reaction and what they actually expected those things and we have tried to gather those things and we have recently launched our third edition of excellence for mrcs OSCE, which is now available and the details are given in our group as well. So after mocks, we will try to give individualized feedback. What are your mistakes? What was you, uh, were you supposed to do? And what was not to be done in the real exam? And if you give a wrong answer or right answer, we could try to give a feedback. Usually, we used to give that. And another one is updated study material, which contains the latest recent recalls up to September 2024 and the categoric pictures as well in our third edition of Excellence for MRCS. These are the three volumes uh, that we have released for the improvement of your knowledge portion into anatomy, critical care, and pathology. That is how we can help you to get a marks in motion that is it and okay, uh, dr. Hastad, i would like to add knowledge we are about yes dr hastat yes yes can you hear me okay please go to the previous yes, picture yes. okay okay just i would like to give some input with your doctor one of our candidates uh, person asks, uh, can you say the same uh, images okay okay so one thing i would like to say uh, I always will say you, no picture will be common for you, for your exam. But main thing to uh, have a proper uh, information, proper preparation, that is the practicing the uh, pictures from the cadaver pictures from the anatomy. Okay, so I can remember while I was just preparing the lower limb anatomy, I opened thirteen uh, at first. Opened nine books, then th the number of the books become to thirteen. Thirteen books together to find out the most accurate picture to just enrich your book, so that you can have a proper knowledge from the lower limb or whatever the anatomy segment is. You you may have a proper knowledge from various aspect. So whenever you are you will be shown any picture from you so that you can answer those things. So 
no individual book, individual book is enough for you. Like if, if I just simply say about the Jeremy and just uh, Grey's Anatomy, uh, Sergeant's version or teacher's version and the uh, student version. And we opened as well those books. But you do, as you are a uh, student right now, you are preparing for the exam, You it's very difficult to identify which picture is needed for you. But as we are working for a long period of time over this segment, so we do know which picture is to pick for you and is, is to emphasize for you. So we have collected all the pictures, all the important pictures, and those pictures have been in, uh, given in your book. Just simply have some idea, all the books are available, and I can assure you this is the most, most famous book for the Masters Oscar right now in the field. You may get some pictures. Even we have included all the extra pictures. Like we couldn't accommodate few pictures in the in between the uh, chapter in between the topic. So we have accommodated the ex extra pictures from uh, just at the end of the every single topic to have some ideas so for the better preparation. So I would say say you don't go for so many uh, books for at a time. If you have some uh, if you some uh, have opportunity, just go through our book. That is enough for you to make your proper idea for the. Uh, uh, and to portion segment. Thank you very much. I, I think Dr. Ukti got your answer. Okay, Dr. Ukti. Okay, Dr. Uh, uh, I think she is from the Facebook Live. You can continue, Dr. Has. Okay, okay. So now we are heading towards our skill portion. Uh, one of the most challenging things to overcome in the skill portion. But what we have discussed in case of knowledge, these are the like anatomy and clinical care at the pump station. And in case of his, um, in this skill portion, history taking, you know, there are four segments, history taking, another one is, com is uh, uh, communication, another one is examination, another one is procedural. The two most pump station are history and another one is procedural, procedural station, where you will get total 80 marks and you can carry most of the marks or huge marks from this particular portion. And it's very easy uh, to grab the marks from these particular two portions. Okay, so how history taking station usually uh, go on? Here, you will find a same room like that way. You will find a door and a question paper will be hanging over there. And same as that, you will have one minute to read out the stem or to complete the stem. And after reading this stem within one minute, this uh, in case of skill portion, the stem are not that much large like other pathology or critical care. So it is very easy to identify within one minute. But in case of history station, within one minute, your task would be which to detect which station is this and what are the differentials you are going to exclude after a few minutes entering into the station. Like suppose uh this is a case of suppose you have uh, identified this is a case of knee pain and okay so as whenever you have identified that this is a case of knee pain okay so what are the causes of knee pain or which one will you try to differentiate because in case of that you already know the diagnosis what it would be in case of mrcs part b exam it may be uh acl or meniscal tear or it can be post-traumatic arthritis you know the diagnosis but just make sure uh, which di differentials, three or four or five differentials, you are going to exclude this question. And what are the questions you will ask against that particular differentials? You have already prepared those things during your preparation time. So that is not the time to fix the question there. That is the time to fix the differentials against that particular diagnosis. Okay, so, so that uh, you can save your time during history taking and obviously, after taking the history, the examiner will ask you, what are your differentials? So if you make sure what are your differentials you are going to exclude outside the room and you are pre-prepared, and in that case, you can easily able to answer, you'll be easily able to answer that particular question. So it will uh, benefit you to gather the history as my, uh, in the shortest possible time and to deliver the post uh, uh, cross questions after history taking very easily. So after having one minute, your task is two. One is which history is this and what are the differentials you're going to exclude. 
Then after entering into the station, you will find a table over here. And you will find the two examiners are sitting over there. Obviously, you will have 20 minutes, 20 marks on that particular station. So one examiner would be your surgical examiner. Another examiner would be your lay examiner. So one of them will uh, ask you that, hey, gentleman or doctor, uh, what, what's your candidate number? I am, you, I am Mr. X, your surgical examiner, and this is your uh, Mr. Y, who is your lay examiner. And uh, you know, this is your patient. Have you read the stem? So if you say, yes, you have read the stem, then you can proceed with the patient. And if you don't, uh, haven't read the stem, you can ask for that. There is no harm to that. But it will consume time from the six minutes because in the station, you will have total nine minutes. And from the nine minutes, you will have six minutes for your history taking and three minutes for the conversation with, the, with your examiner, which will include presentation, some of the cross questions like this. So after uh, entering into the station, they will examiners will introduce you and they will introduce you with the patient as well. Then you will proceed with the patient. Okay. The thing is here, you will find that the patient is sitting over here. This is patient and this is candidate. This is you over here. Okay. So you will be provided a pen and a paper over here to write down some important notes during your history taking. Okay. So ultimately uh, you will obviously proceed with the conversation, but as a basic norm to proceed a conversation with the person, you must seek for a permission and to seek for a permission first tell you who you are actually, right? So whatever it is, you must introduce yourself, then ask the patient's identity then you must seek for permission and then you can go for open question then cross question close question then pro, uh, differentials like this way we know the formats of the history taking and these things are given in our books as well as conventional books as well so this is a matter of practice but what actually gives the difference in between markings out of these 20 marks if you take a completely near to perfect or perfect history, you will get only 8 marks. Only history. So, 8 out of 20 will not make you pass. So, what will you? So, you will have 4 marks on professionalism. Right? Professionalism means introduction of yourself. How are you asking the patient's name and age? Like, are you taking consent to proceed the conversation? Or if we are asking some personal questions, like what are uh, the patient's uh, occupation, or whom the patient actually lives with, or uh, about sexual history, or about personal life, those things, you must seek permission for that as well, right? And another one is this one, professionalism. And suppose another thing is this one, okay. And you will have four marks on communication. How are you building the rapport with the patient? Like to have a proper communication, you must face forward to the patient. Like the patient is sitting in front of you and facing towards you, but you are given a pen and paper. So to write, the, write it down, you are facing towards the examiner. That is not the proper way of communication. So that is one thing. Another one is whenever the patient is talking, you must maintain the eye contact. So the examiners look for this as well. And another thing is active listening. What do you mean by active listening? Active listening means just not maintaining about eye contact. Whatever the patient says, you must go for head nodding, right? You must uh, say the empathy, like you must not laugh whenever the patient says something bad, okay? And give a signposting, like the patient is having pain. So you will obviously show some empathy regarding pain, will offer some painkiller, like that way. Or if the patient uh, faces headache, you can uh, ask the examiner to turn the light off, like that way, that could be the another way. Or suppose if you are going to write it down something, there might be a breach of, 
eye contact. So to that, you can ask the patient that I'm going to write it down something. Would you please allow this thing? Okay. So the exam patient will obviously give you the permission. Don't worry about that. But whether you are asking for that, the, the examiners are looking for this one. And suppose uh, the patient has said that his father or mother has died from colon cancer in case of parietal bleeding station, or there might be a positive family history. And uh, he, he or she has said that he, uh, his father has died from uh, colon cancer. And he, you have jumped to the next question because you are running out of time. But that is the thing you lose marks in the communication as well. Like he has lost his father, you must show an, uh, some empathy to combat some marks. So uh, to finish the history in six minutes is not a big issue if you are uh, prepared enough. But if you fail to show some sympathy against this thing, ultimately, and in some situation, patient may cry, uh, remembering his father or mother, like that way. In that case, you must offer uh, the tissue, what is present on the table, or you can give a glass of water, or you can offer this one to, that, to the patient, those things. Okay, so these are the things are building the rapport with the patient. How are you building the communication or how are you building the friendship with the patient that will carry your four marks. So the basic steps or basic norms of the professionalism, like greetings yourself, asking the patient, consent taking, and those things and documentation, assurance of the patient, like you will get back to him and uh, you are asking that in the uh, idea, concern and evaluation that what are your concerns? What are uh, what do you want from us to do? Like this way, if you are asking that, and I, I I will let you my I let my consultant about your condition, and we'll get back to you regarding this one. Hopefully, we will uh, back again with a good news. Like this way, if you are giving a uh, true vibe, this is not a false assurance, but you are giving some positive hope. These are the things that the patient you are trying to. This indicates that you are trying to develop a rapport or good communication with the patient that will carry four months. And another thing is, after this history, history conclusion, you will have four months on presentation and cross question. So you will have two months on presentation or three months, but then you will have cross question. All of them will combine with four months. That will carry you 20. So ultimately look at here, taking history and professionalism and communication will have equal importance. Okay, so if you fail in this particular portion, obviously it will not make you pass if you face or if you miss those two things. And in case of presentation, the examiner will ask you, present your case, what I have faced in the exam, or in some center, the examiner may ask you that what are your positive points in your different life. Like the examiner may ask you, what is your diagnosis? Okay, why? Why do you think that? Like that way. So, you can be asked about positive findings. You can be asked about present your case. Whatever it is, in case of MRCS exam, the diagnosis is almost fixed. Like in case of parietal bleeding, the diagnosis is carcinoma colon. In case of unilateral tonsillar swelling, it is obviously neoplastic swelling. It is not tonsillitis or peritonsillar abscess. It should not be. Okay. So they are not assessing you to make a big diagnosis. They are not trying to say or they are not trying to look that you are you will diagnose and very uncommon diagnosis or very uh, rare diagnosis they are not looking for that they are looking for whether you can take the history perfectly from a patient or whether you know the system how to take a history they are looking for that they are not looking that you are trying to diagnose a rare disease, not like that. So don't try to alter the diagnosis. If you try to alter, there is a very highly uh, there is a high chance to to be failed in that particular station. Okay, so this is it. Uh, you will have two history taking station. These are the very punch station where you can get more marks in in any other than any other station of the skill portion. You will have one minute, and you will find two examiners. One is lay examiner, another one is, uh, yes, your surgical examiner. Your surgical examiner will have 12 marks and your lay examiner will have eight marks on professionalism and communication. And you will have six minutes for history taking. And after six minutes, you will not be allowed to take talk with the patient 
you will obviously look towards the consultant and have to present the case and follow up question. This is the marks breakdown. You will have eight marks on this taking. You will have four marks following the steps of professionalism or the basic norms of having a communication and how are you building the rapport with the patient. And lastly, the four marks are on how the things or how you, you have presented the case and, and what are the common questions and what are the common differentials like this. Way. But on a broad heading, after presenting the case, you will not have more than one or one and a half minutes. So obviously, the examiner will ask you what are the differentials and what are the management at least. Okay. So, and these are the common questions you will be asked. Okay. So if you are asked about any other questions, that may be out of the interest from the examiner if you have time. Okay. So this will depend on the examiner. This will depend on the center. So the key aspect, like follow the steps, basic steps of your history taking, show empathy and professional. This first point will have you eight marks. And second point, show empathy and professionalism. For empathy and communication, you will have four marks. And for professionalism, you will have four marks. And just memorize the common differentials. You will have to set those things whenever you are outside of the station and whenever you are reading the stem. And if you are able to memorize the common differentials, hopefully you will be able to say the examiner what are the differentials and what are the investigation will you do to rule out specific differentials. Those are the things. This is one kind of history taking station and one of the common and emerging history taking station, which is coming very frequently nowadays, pre-operative assessment, one of the uh, uncommon stations. But the basic thing is saying you must uh, show empathy, you must follow the basic format, you must maintain the professionalism. Those are the things because to communicate with the patient, you, you will have 16 marks. Just four months only for presenting the case and follow up questions. This is it. And these are the past distinction and where you can get most of the marks in the skill portion. Okay, so this is it. Yeah, as a producer, I would also like to say something about this today's discussion. Okay, Dr. Hansa, thank you very much. Okay, uh, from the skill part, uh, I would like to say what do you mean by this skill? Okay, in the simplest way, skill is such kind of thing that uh, those things won't be developed in a single day. That means this is the thing that, that we'll have to achieve by doing repeatedly. So skill is not that type of thing that you will get or you will acquire in a single day. So this thing will have to acquire by practicing for a long period of time and eventually those things will come to you and those things will convert it into a reflex. And those things will automatically you can deliver. So one thing I will have to I would like to assure you until this thing becomes uh, or converted into a reflex, you won't able to pass in the MRCS OSCE exam. And skills skill part is very important for you. So if you can't convert this thing as a part of your school skill you are uh, uh, reflex you won't able to pass the MRCS OSCE exam especially the skill part okay so regarding the skill part what is the pass mark so pass mark I don't know Dr. Hazard whether he has mentioned or not but average pass mark always I have seen that varies always definitely that varies that fluctuates from 118 to 122 this is the range you will get maximum amount of, of mark so if you simply get more than 125 or equal to 125 that is the safest mark i would like to say so if you get 125 in the skill part definitely will be pass I, I haven't seen anyone and that might happen but maximum time you will get if you can uh, acquire 125 that is the safest mark okay so how would you get the pass mark Always remember, in the skill part, the most easiest part is the history taking part. You will get two stations out of uh, 22, hopefully, 22 history taking stations. And you will, we will teach you or you will get a common format or that might be 
20 things, 20 uh, items. Like at first, you'll have to introduce, hello, I'm Dr. Rifat Manu Sajjah Candice. May I confirm your name and age, please? Okay, nice to meet you, Dr. Smith. Like this, sir. So this thing will have to convert into a reflex. So you'll have to 20 steps. Remember, 20 steps in a row. And you, you are not uh, allowed to go beyond these 20 steps. Remember, the RCS or Royal College of Surgeons are seeking for the safest surgeons. They are not seeking for the most uh, meritorious and most uh, excellent surgeon. They don't look for those things. Who, is not, who, who won't do any harm to the patient? So they are looking for a safe surgeon. Then they are not looking for such kind of surgeon who just can, uh, like a good doctor who is go for a, a, a definite di uh, diagnosis and he will able to do so many surgeries. No, they are not looking for those type of surgeons. They are looking for the safe surgeon. Whether you are allow, uh, following their instructions or not, whether you, like when you are taking the history, you are uh, covering all the steps or not. Is there anything you are skipping, like the family history? Is there anything you are skipping? Is the communication skill is up to the level? So those things will be followed. So only 22 stations are in your book and two stations, you will get two stations in your real exam. So if you can, uh, or if you may have a uh, proper preparation on those things and you'll be able to complete within six minutes and definitely will get the pass mark. And I can be, I do believe, if you're well prepared, it's very simple to acquire more than 17 marks out of 20 in the history taking station. I can, I can uh, uh, assure you guys. So you'll have to have a proper preparation. Like when you are preparing the station, like you're in the outside the room, and you got your, uh, your question paper. It's not like uh, critical care. You're simply given two or three symptoms there. And after that, they will ask you, take the history concerning these symptoms or like this one. So already you found your diagnosis. Definitely Dr. Hassan already said you, like the patient is complaining parietal bleeding. Okay, you, you know so many causes of the parietal bleeding, but I can sh make sure that the diagnosis will be casting of the colon, nothing else. But if you are thinking to establish your diagnosis as a uh, anal fissure or hemorrhoid, and definitely you will just blend this station. So all the things are fixed. You'll have to follow the rules only. You will have to just act or daily or uh, just as actor. All the things are said previously. So don't violate the rules. And if you just simply stay or focus the strategy, I can assure you it is very easy to have the mark 117, sorry, 17 out of 20 marks. So you will get 20, uh, two stations from the history taking. So almost 35, uh, acquiring 35 out of 40 is nothing for you. So thank you very much, guys. One thing I just say, while I'm just uh, telling you one strategy, so while you are preparing outside the room, like you would have one minute, but to complete the question, to read out the whole question, that is that will take only 20 to 25 uh, seconds, and you will have 40 seconds or 35 seconds. Just, just memorize the other differentials. Like you found your question is say parietal bleeding, so your diagnosis is uh, question of colon. You are fixed. Then go, go for the other differentials. What are the differentials? You have to ask the question. So there are different, uh, different uh, questions. Those are related with the. Uh, considering the differentials. So set the, all the questions, at least two or three questions for every single diagnosis, every single differentials. Like when you are preparing, while you are taking the history, at the middle of the history, like when you are uh, uh, asking or breaking the differentials, you found you almost cover four minutes or 3.5 minutes, like in the third differentials. Don't go for any more differentials, just complete four differentials, then go for the other questions. No, but in your book, you will get seven or eight differentials for every single diagnosis. No, just I think four or five differentials is enough. If you do have enough time, go for the five, otherwise four differentials. 
then cover the differences and go for the other format. And if you stick with the format and if you complete your whole history taking, I can assure you, you will get 17 or 80 marks. That's all. Thank you, Dr. Hasan. Okay, so uh, Dr. Rotna has asked, that, do I need to take permission or knock the door? Actually, the thing is, after finishing of uh, finishing one minute, the invigilator will say that, yes, doctor, enter into the station. And then examiner will greet you. But it's better to greet your examiner by yourself, that hello with a smile or hello with a smile to the patient. It's better to say. So that will not uh, lose Okay, the, no yeah. permission is needed, Dr. Rotna. No permission is needed okay. because there will be one bell or there is one calling bell, and you will be uh, instructed previously when the bell is ring, you will allow to enter into the room. So whenever you will enter into the room, definitely they will greet you and you will have to greet the uh, examiner. That's all. Okay. Okay. So, thank you, Bayer. Okay. So regarding clinical examination station, so here the same as history taking station, but here the six minute of history taking, here instead of that, you will find or you will have six minutes to examine the patient. That is the difference. So just like that, you will have one minute to return to the stem after entering into the station. Then you will find a table here and you will find a bed or there might be a chair or depending on the uh, situation you are asked to examine. Like in case of uh, head neck examination, in case of parotid, submandibular or cranial nerve examination, you will find only a chair. Okay, that where the patient is sitting on that. And you will find another chair to sit down for you actually and on the opposite side you will find only one examiner who is actually looking for that who has the 20 marks on his hand okay and if it is a systemic examination you will find a bed or couch like that okay then after entering into the station the thing is you will same as the history taking you will introduce yourself then greet why are you here then confirm the patient's name and age then take permission and follow the steps but here you will have eight marks on your proper examination. If you complete the examination properly within six minutes of time, you will get only eight. So obviously it will not make you pass. And most of you uh, who are taking preparation throughout the uh, throughout the pre pre preparation journey, all of you know what are the steps like in in a knee examination or in a hip examination or in a chest examination like that you already know the things but the best thing is you will have four minutes uh, four marks on your professionalism and another four marks on your communication how are you building the report with the patient professionalism means you will uh, introducing yourself taking the history from the uh, uh, taking the permission from the patient confirming the patient's name and age those things like right? you are uh, um, giving a proper idea or proper screening of that uh, patient and you are asking the patient's position whether he's comfortable in that position or not like that way whether you are asking for a chaperone or not like that way if you are asking for a pain these are the parts of professionalism and in case of communication throughout the examination whether you are able to give the instruction properly to the patient whether the patient is actually understanding those things. Missing one or two steps of the examination will not make you fail. You can lose one or two marks highest, but if you make a problem with the professionalism and communication, there are almost equally eight marks on that. So that will make you, that can make you fail in the exam. Okay, so the thing is uh, you, most of the candidates I have seen that they actually worry about that I have missed that step, step that can finish almost 80 to 90 percent step or eight to nine step out of 10 in a closed eye. Don't worry about that. But the thing is whether you are delivering the instant properly or whether you are concerned about this, whether you are being chaperone or how are you doing those things clearly like whether you are uh, make sure suppose in case of the examination you are going to do a manoeuvre or you are going to pain whether you are offering a painkiller or not these are the things uh, whether the patient feel you are trying to or you are making the patient uh, feel that you are safe to him 
he is looking for that. And the examiner is also looking for that. Whether the screening is done, whether the proper exposure is done, or whether uh, the positioning and repositioning and re-exposure is done. Those things are very vital and they are carry equal marks on the picture. And you will have four marks on cross differential and cross question. That is your 20 marks. So during the reading of the, during this uh, STEM reading, you will have to determine which examination you are going to do in this room and then what are the differentials against that. You will set those things so that you can get, get uh, proper things and proper differentials against your diagnosis. That is it. And another thing is, whenever you are taking, uh, talking about investigation, just try to say what investigation are you doing and why, just to rule out your these differentials. You just rule out that this different, like you said, those things. Okay. And if the exam patient says that he is unable to move, don't force the patient or don't rush the patient. Okay. So, one is suppose that uh, the, there is a diagnosis of acute cholecystitis, and the patient is talking about that he has so much pain on the right upper abdomen. So, you must not go for Murphy's sign to make or to show the examiner that yeah, you, your diagnosis is confirmed that is acute polycystitis. No, the examiner is not looking for that. The examiner is looking for that whether you are empathetic to the patient. So if the examiner, uh, the patient say, no, doctor, don't touch here. I, I, I'm feeling so much pain here. So you will not go for Murphy's test. That is the basic things. And you will also, so you can say, how can I differ? So if you, if the patient says so much pain, you will consider that the Murphy sign is positive. In case of appendicitis, if the patient says that this is the thing, and you will take rebound tenderness and uh, yellow local tenderness, these things are usually positive. You can take those things positive. And in case of knee examination, if the uh, patient says, doctor, I can, uh, I can't bend the knee, or I, in case of anterior rotis, if the patient says, the doctor, so, so pain, I'm feeling so much pain, so you will not perform that. Thing. So you'll consider this is positive. So if the patient says, yes, doctor, you can proceed. So you can do, then the patient gives a reaction or can say that this is a, uh, he's feeling pain. In that case, you can proceed, otherwise not. So don't give pain to the patient. Otherwise, it will lose marks. So don't give to induce or to elicit a special test in the exam, uh, in the exam just to show that you are confirmed about the diagnosis. No, they are looking for whether you are giving the pain or you are empathetic to the patient or not. These are the things in case of clinical examination setup. So you will have three stations. So one minute to read out the stem. One examiner will be there who will carry 20 marks. So six minutes and three minutes for follow-up and breakdown is almost similar for, for the clinical examination station, just like the history taking station, where you will have one, eight marks on history taking. So usually one orthopedic station can come in your exam. Another one from systemic. Systemic can be your chest, abdomen, cardio, cardiac, or it can be vascular, it can be neurological. And another is swelling related. It can be submandibular, it can be thyroid, it can be parotid, it can be breast lump, or it can be lipoma. These are the common swellings that come, can come usually in the exam. Though they are not fixed, RCS usually changes this, doesn't follow this pattern actually. So the thing is, you must follow the step, basic rule of step, which will carry eight marks, show empathy and professionalism, empathy and communication, wrap up, build up, give the instruction properly with the complete sentence. So that will uh, enhance your performance. If you cannot complete a sentence, even and or if the patient doesn't understand you after giving the instruction, you can show the test or you can show the maneuver doing on yourself so that the, the patient can apply this on his body. Like that way, if the patient cannot understand those things, by this way, you can set the time as well without repeating the instruction. And know the differentials and that will carry four months. This is a sample station. This is a station where you will have, look at here, uh, you will have one minute, but you know which station is this. A 55-year-old patient came to orthopedic department for knee pain. So this is a case of knee pain. So ultimately, obviously, he is asking for to examine the knee. That is it. Then you will have the diagnosis after 
this one. So just fix what are the differentials and what are you trying to do or what are you going to do in the room. You have to fix this uh, whenever you are standing outside the room. That is it. And be patient with the, be cautious with the patient and be uh, empathetic with the patient's behavior. So whenever you are running out of time, don't hurry the patient or don't rush the patient. That will lose the marks again. So if the examiner thinks that you are forcing the patient to do something or you are uh, making the patient in a hurry, that will also lose the marks. Okay. So if you practice again and again, you will be able to finish the station uh, examination within five minutes and 30 seconds, five and a half minutes. So ultimately, there will be some system loss in the real exam. But if you practice this within five and a half minutes, there will be enough. And don't rush the patient. Don't make the patient in a hurry. And give the instruction in a proper way. Rapport buildup, you already know, maintaining the eye contact, head body, those things. If the patient complains about pain, if the patient cries, if the patient cannot do a maneuver, what are you, what are the things you need to do? You know the things. That is it regarding the communication station. Yes, Dr. Rifat there. Okay, thank you, Dr. Asna. So, guys, uh, this is the uh, clinical examination, and Dr. Hassan has already said everything. So, while you are uh, preparing the skill part, I can assure you, you will give your seventy percent time only for the only for the preparing your examination station. Because have a look, guys, you will get nine stations, right? You will get nine stations, and out of nine stations, three stations from the examination stations and you will get uh, 24 examinations 23 or 24 examination uh, uh, examinations in your book and out of 24 examinations you will get three examinations in your exam and all of you know that exam stations have so many steps and every single steps you will have mark like if you just prior touching the patient, you will have to wash your hand. And after finishing the your examination, you'll have to wash your hand. So if you do forget to wash your hand before touching the patient and after doing your examination, finishing the examination, and if you don't remember to do those things, you lose mark. Because for the washing and your, your hand, before or after, you will have two marks. So guys, you will have to practice those things several times in your life before while you are preparing yourself. But so many things you will have to remember how to uh, expose and where uh, uh, particular and exposure of the patient particularly depends on the type of examination and where you will have to seek for the your uh, chaperone, how to build the rapport with the patient. Just think, you are auscultating the patient like you are going for the chest aus auscultation. So just think, two patient, like one hand, one, one uh, candidate just uh, keep his left hand just behind behind the candidate's hand and just press, press, placing the bell over the patient's chest. And the another scenario, the candidate keep one hand on the patient's shoulder and another uh, with the another hand, he's touching the patient or placing the bell of the patient. So two scenarios are different. One candidate keeping on one hand just behind the behind the candidates and another candidate is touching the patient with the other hand while other hand is not for the examination purpose. So by touching this patient with one hand and this is making the rapport with the patient. So you will get the mark for the report. So if you don't build the report with the patient, and if you don't give the feel that you are owning the patient, I owe you. I I do owe you. You will have to make or you will have to give these feelings to the patient. You won't get the optimum level. It's very difficult. So move. Most important thing, you will have to practice so many times. I have seen so many candidates in my life. 
in my life he's practicing for the long period of time because and he, he just mentioned that okay i i don't don't forget to any other step to do but still i am failing why because he is not practicing in the proper way so you will have to know this thing how to give the patient uh, how to touch the patient how to expose the patient when to seek for the report how to uh, show empathy to the patient and how to reveal the report to the patient those are the things and these are very important and definitely without practicing those thing on become your reflex and you won't able to make your level up to the past la past level so it's very important and this thing will have to you'll have to acquire this thing by practicing so many things so many times but under a supervision guys don't do practice without any supervision i i am telling you because if you don't if you do practice without the supervision nobody will be there to to find out your faults just you just find someone who is your colleague like you found someone who, who your uh, colleague and he recently passed the exam just ask him okay doctor would you please uh, just uh, observe me i am doing the chest examination i am doing the cbs examination or respiratory system examination. just find the difficulties what just find the uh, mistakes i am doing then by asking uh, uh, those thing and doing practicing in front of your colleague you will be he will able to find out the difficulties and the wrong steps and without the supervision you will keep practicing but you won't get your difficulties or the wrong steps and you will definitely eventually fail in the exam it's very normal so you'll have to practice most of the time clinical exams is very important because the maximum amount of stations you'll get the clinical examination and there are so many steps and without practicing is this thing on able to build thank you very much dr hasan please continue if you guys do have any questions regarding particular stations please there is a chat box here just come uh, drop your comment we will uh, eventually answer those things thank you okay thank you so in case of procedural skills so just like other uh, history taking station this is another pump station where you can carry so many marks right so here this is the same thing just like the other stations you will have uh, one minute to read out the stem then you will enter into the station and you will find a patient having a seat on the couch and then you will find an examiner you may find one assistant but it will depend on the scenario and there might be two examiners as well so it will depend okay but the thing is you will have complete 9 minutes after entering into the station to talk and to do or to complete the procedure what you are asked to do so after entering into the station obviously you will greet the patient those things and obviously you will go for uh, patient's wristband check and you will introduce yourself you will take permission and you will explain the things why are you here and what are the procedure you are going to do what are the problems that you face and uh, if you not do the procedure Uh, if, if you don't do the procedure or what are the complications that could arise throughout the procedure or after the procedure you must explain all of the things and after that you will seek for a uh, permission and after the permission you will look for that uh, whether the equipments are there you know the step wh safety checklist you usually look for that and then any tetanus antibiotic any x-ray was done those things right after uh, then uh, how you are giving local anesthesia Yeah, step by step, whether you are checking the uh, expiry date or not, like whether you are checking in local anesthesia whether there is adrenal in mixed or not, or uh, you are checking the expiry date of the syringe, whether you are asking the patient about the body weight to calculate the approximate do dose of the local anesthesia. These are the things, or these are the impressions that carry marks. Uh, throughout your procedure like you have given local anesthesia but before giving or before introduction of the uh, needle you must uh, make the patient alert that you are you are going to uh, introduce a sharp object into his body right so ultimately you must uh, make sure that he or she is well aware of that uh, otherwise the patient will cry out 
then you no one is going to uh, prevent you from failing that station and another thing after giving local anesthesia you will obviously ask the examiner for 5 minutes then don't proceed for the procedure like you can take a thumb for step or tooth for step then uh, look for any sensation whether it has worked or not okay so if you don't do that the examiner will eventually so the candidate uh, uh, patient will eventually cry and obviously you will lose marks in that station as well so these are the things make sure the patient the, the, the patient that you are a safe person to conduct this procedure like you are showing uh, the things you are continuously talking with the patient and you are talking uh, making the patient aware about local anesthesia numbing agent or uh, whether the pain has gone the after giving local anesthesia ask the patient for permission that can you proceed now do you feel any pain like this way okay so these are the common things that you can build up the uh, communication with the patient and build up the rapport right and once you are into the procedure or whenever you are doing the procedure don't be silent okay so try to maintain or try to run a conversation with the patient you don't have to make an eye contact here unlike clinical examination or history taking just make the patient busy uh, so that the examiner don't are uh, had don't have the chance or don't have the floor to ask you some questions okay so during the procedure you must give the advice to the patient like what would be the antibiotic after the procedure what would be about what would be the, um, the pr protocol for analgesic after the procedure or when the patient will come for for uh, stitch removal or when will be the second appointment like for in case of nervous excision we will find, you will uh, make sure that, that the patient has a proper date of appointment when will he will come back uh, for his pathology report but in case of abscess station or you will make sure that when he will come back for calcium sensitivity, sensitivity report and whether there is a need for changing the antibiotic like this, this way you will you must make sure that uh, patient is well instructed when he will come back again and another thing regarding the danger sign when he will contact you or emergency department as soon as possible like that way you must mention all of the things regarding dressing suppose you are doing a procedure so you know there might be some uh dressing over there when will the patient change the dressing and when will uh, whether the patient will take bath or shower regarding these things every particular thing very much so whether you are if you do the procedure and if you give the answers of the examiner and if you miss the miss to give the instruction to the patient obviously you will lose four or five marks from that okay so this is one uh, another part of professionalism if you uh, miss those things okay so another thing is don't forget to give the advice or uh, postoperative advice to the patient this is another thing okay and after that finishing the procedure the examiners will look for whether you are a safe surgeon or not. So this is what you can show that you are disposing the right instrument or the right materials or right washers to the right pin or not. Like that way he or she, the examiner is actually looking for that. Like whether you have dropped the sharp pin, a sharp instrument like needle, like blade, like those things or these things into the sharp pin or in the yellow bin, whether you have put the gloves, whether you have put the thread, those things, right? So whether you have a uh, drapping sheet, whether you have disposed those things, or if you can do, you can just ask for that. That will also be okay if you can do this. And obviously, last but not the least, ask for documentation and give a thanks to the patient. Okay. So the most important thing here is carrying out the procedure. That will be 12 marks. And for the communication, sorry, for the communication, you will have communication and giving instruction, you will have four marks and the rest of the four marks will be for your disposal documentation and some of the questions that, that consultants can ask you regarding that. So ultimately, all of them will carry 20 marks. Just completing the procedure perfectly will not give you 20 out of 20. That will give you only 12. So other than this, giving instruction, maintaining proper safety, WHO safety checklist, ask for the patient for pain, 
uh, like tetanus, antibiotic, or X-ray, and giving post advice, documentation. These are the things you must look for. And examiners are actually looking for that particular thing. They are not looking how are you giving the speech. Though there are some basic things that whether you are touching the needle with your hands or not, or whether uh, how are you giving this, how comfortable you are, whether you have practiced or not. Like they, that way, they are actually looking for that. But the most important thing, they actually look for the whole procedure of your local anesthesia. They actually look for that. So because there are so much steps where you can use marks without having proper instruction to the patient. These are the things you can actually do. And these are the procedural skills you can have most of the marks. You can get 20 out of 20. If you can completely uh, complete the station with proper instruction to the patient. It is not necessarily going to happen that there is own uh, suture, there is a large own, suppose five to six centimeter own. You don't have to close the own. If you can come uh, to the middle, that would be okay for this one. But don't forget to give, uh, follow the steps. Don't forget to give the advice this one. And you will have stations, two stations on that, one minute to read out the step and nine minutes to complete the station. You will have one or two examiners that will vary and you will have one patient there might be one assistant or there will be none but the marks breakdown is 12 4 4 these are the things and the basic thing is follow the step what you have been prepared through your journey show empathy and professionalism professionalism and maintain a proper communication with the patient keep the patient busy throughout the uh, station just continuously talk with the patient uh, talk to the patient and don't forget to give the advice actively actively means the patient don't wait for the patient that when will he or she ask me the question not don't wait for that whenever you are started the procedure you have started the procedure just go and deliver the information to the patient regarding antibiotic analysis yeah like shower dressing like when the stitch to be removed when it's a second appointment, next appointment, when it's the time of uh, what are the warning signs, when to contact and how to contact, those are the things. You must inform the patient. These are very, very vital. And if you don't give actively, and if you re remain silent, the examiner will have the floor, then they will ask you what are the dose of lidocaine, how lidocaine works, uh, why lidocaine doesn't act in abscess cavity. Okay, so what is Langer's line? What is baseline, what is the importance, what are the difference between them, what are the things you look for during an, uh, making an incision. These are the questions you will have to face. And whenever the examiner is asking this, uh, this question to you, and you are trying to answer, obviously the process of the procedure you are doing on that time will be slowed down. Okay, so ultimately you will not be able to finish the session. So it's better to give the instruction to talk to the patient, not to the consultant during that procedure okay so that will bring more marks in case of procedural skill and obviously examiner will try to ask you some questions and obviously that will distract you and you uh, you will not be able to finish the station within the nine minutes allotted time okay so ultimately if you are well aware of the things and if you Maintain the communication with the patient, do the procedure, focus on the procedure and focus to give the advice, documentation and proper disposal. That will give you the highest marks. Okay, so don't give the floor to the patient. That is the hacks for this particular station. Okay, so Dr. Hidra, can you read the scheme? Yes, ma'am. Um... You are Dr. Sarah, working for consultant surgeon, Mr. Um, Man, in the Oxford University Hospital as a surgical HHO. M, uh, Mrs. Jen Smith, a 50-year-old woman, came to A&E with the mole or nervous in front of her right thigh. Mr. Mann has been called up for an emergency splenectomy and is unavailable to attend her at this moment. The nurse's charge called uh, you to attend to Ms. Smith, uh, Mrs. Smith and remove the lesion, followed by approximation of her 
own with approximate uh, appropriate to suit your material and do the needle full your time is 9 minutes to complete the station okay so here you are, you are, after reading the stem you are dr sara and uh, your consultant is mr mel and you are working this hospital okay that is fine but after enter if the name is written on the stem and after entering into the station don't say hello i am dr rito like that way if the name is said like that way you must say or you must address yourself as dr sara that is it and most of the time the name is not given but if the name is already given you must address the name that is given on the stem that is it and another thing is remember the name of the consultant and remember why are you here everything is mentioned and why your consultant is not available you must mention those things as well and you must uh, tell the patient that what are the problem that could arise if you don't remove the lesion and what are the problem that could arise throughout the procedure like bleeding infection pain those things right so i'll remind those things and give the local anesthetist carefully there are some state basic states or that the examiner when the examiner actually looks for that whether you are, we have discussed these things and whenever you are uh, you have started the procedure make sure you have given all of the advice to the patient okay then if the examiner have the room for that to ask you some questions they will ask you but don't give the floor the examiner to distract you that is it okay dr dipak sir would you like to say about procedural skills patient yes uh, dr hasan thank you very much yeah, i i was just uh, listening all of you think you are telling us and perfectly everything you have completed uh, just one thing i'd like to give emphasize is okay guys so two thing or acquiring mark uh, from the emerses oski is in the skill part two uh, two section is totally on your hand one is the history taking and another one is the procedural stations i already said about and we have already discussed about the history taking station here the procedural stations you will have only six stations except uk stations what did i mention you will have only six stations except uk stations o overseas stations uh, usually they don't don't give you chest drain stations but in case of uk stations you will get the chest drain so who are going to appear in the uk stations you'll have to uh, land seven stations including the chest drain and who are not going to the uk stations six stations are enough okay out of these six stations you will get two stations in your exam just write it down you will get two stations out of six stations so it's very simple it's very simple to do very well in the procedural stations dr hasan already said every single thing and every single steps you have marked so you will have to have a very clear preparation on these six stations you will have to prepare all of the six stations and if you can uh, convert those thing in your reflex and it's very easy to have 18 marks out of 20 at least okay one thing or one strategy i'm giving you someone just mentioned about the is there any mark for the extra questions okay this thing has not revealed by the rcs royal college of surgeons okay so just simple one station like this particular station it is dealing with the nevus excision okay so while you are doing the nevus excision and dr hasan just told you you'll have to give the give the instructions to the patient okay simple think about you have started the nevus excision and you didn't start to talking with the patient and you are just silently doing the nevus or silently excising the nevus so suddenly or if uh, you examine suddenly ask you could you please tell me the dose of the lidocaine so what will you do you will have to lidocate for this patient like the patient's uh, weight is 70 kg so what you will have to do you will have to calculate the dose safety dose or the maximum dose and for calculation of the dose you will have to stop the procedure so so it's very difficult so this is the session for the multi multitasker 
you will have to do so many things at a time. So, it's our advice while you are taking the or while you are doing the procedure, just start talking with the patient. Like if you just start talking with the patient continuously, the examiner won't get any opportunity to ask you any question. So you won't misguided. You will able to complete your station within time. Like if you start uh, uh, giving the instructions to the patient, like how many visits the patient will have to have and what are the procedures, what will be the painkiller, any instructions about the antibiotic, any instructions about the dressing and if you're just talking with the patient the examiner won't get you any scope to ask you any questions and definitely if you stop talking with the patient the examiner will get the opportunity and he will start asking you the question and definitely for asking the question like you didn't get you you couldn't answer any any particular question and definitely you will become nervous and there will be shakiness on, on your hand and you won't able to uh, complete your station so very important it's very important. Dr. Hasnath perfectly said every single thing. You will have to just make this thing into your reflex. Always, just while you are doing the procedure, start talking with the patient. Don't give any opportunity to the examiner to ask you any questions. And if you have done with the procedure, and if you do have any more time left, the examiner will ask you and definitely those questions are very fixed and you will be able to answer every single thing very perfectly. It's only be a big deal. So guys, do you have any question? Is, is there any question? Just uh, drop in our chat box and definitely we'll try to answer those things. Dr. Hakan, please, thank you very much. Continue. Okay, thank you, Mayor. So our next uh, station is person communication. Uh, very few stations actually only you will have seven or eight stations among them you will have one of them and one of the most interesting stations is, and look at here the thing is uh, here you will have two stations in one one is you will have two rooms this is one room room number one and another one will be room number two consecutively they are situated here room number two and in the first room, you will have a door here, and then you will have that stem to read out. And after one minute, you will enter into the room. Then you will file, find a table and a chair. There will be a file that is kept on the table. You will find some paper, pencil, or pen to write down some notes from the file. That is it. Now, the thing is, there will be no person no examiner, nothing else. Only a chair table and a file and some pen and pencil. That is it. And you will have nine minutes to gather the information or necessary information for the next step or for the next step. But in case of person communication, as you know, that uh, most of the stations, uh, uh, in case of uh, whenever you are taking the preparation, you know what are the concerns the patient will arise in the next station. So ultimately, that your task here would be to collect or to gather some information to face the next station. After nine minutes, to go through the file and taking some notes, then you will come out of this station. Then you will have one minute you will have to spend here. And you will find the exact same paper which was written over here. Then after one minute, then you will enter into the station. Here, you will find a table. Obviously, there would be a patient sitting over here and there would be another chair for you. And opposite to the table, there are two examiner. One is surgical examiner and another one is lay examiner. Just like the history taking station, you will find two examiners. And they will greet you or you can greet them at first. Then after that, they will ask you whether you are confident about the stem. Then you will proceed to the conversation with the patient, just like the way a proper communication should be. Just, you will introduce yourself, you will confirm the patient's identity, then you will uh, tell the patient, why are you here? And what are, you, what are the things you are going to discuss with the patient? Just seek for the permission. And once the patient gives the permission, then go through the conversation. And all of you already know that what are the things the patient will arise. Like in case of uh, 
subcapsular hematoma in dama mastectomy uh, dama uh, subcapsular hematoma station you know that the patient will say that he has no job he don't want he doesn't want to stay in the hospital he his wife has a cancer he has a job interview you know those all the things and what the what your task will be just to face the question of the patient and try to rephrase or paraphrase try to convince the patient in a your way that is it don't go word by word like the books just make it natural go with the way okay but don't touch the patient except there is a station that is a uh, warfare station as you know where the patient is legally blind and to greet a blind patient you can place your hand over the shoulder of the patient to greet or to make the patient feel your presence that is it and otherwise you must not touch the patient and in your conversation the patient can be worried about something the patient may cry in that case you can offer glass of water you can offer tissue these are the normal norms and another thing is just sit in the on the in the direction towards the patient not towards the examiner that is one thing and actively listen do head nodding maintain eye contact those things and another thing is lean forward to the patient don't lean backward to the chair right so, so sit in the anterior aspect of the chair and lean forward to the patient that means indicates that you are focusing or you are giving emphasis on what the patient is actually talking or what trying to say those things these are the way or scenario of a proper communication that you are giving emphasis on them and another thing is don't interrupt the patient always try to listen actively first then once the patient finishes his sentence then you will start and if the patient uh, says that or gets very much angry he will obviously shout and whenever he shouting is finished give a pause then you will start if don't talk in the middle of the conversation or don't interrupt the patient it doesn't mean that you are giving the exam you will talk more no you will listen more you will talk less this is the thing of this conversation you will give the floor to the patient you you will listen actively the patient's apprehension what is patient trying to say and you will obviously know what would be the outcome of the uh, station like in case of subcapsular hematoma the patient will eventually go out of the hospital in case of dama mastectomy the patient will eventually go out of the hospital but the thing is you must try to give apprehension to them and another thing you will find uh, some station that uh, uh you find that there are uh, angry mother or anxious mother or angry wife those things so in that case conversation patient may stand up from the chair and patient may walk uh, will try to walk away from out of the room in that case you will sit down and obviously you will uh, sit down will try to make yourself calm apologize to the patient again and again though it's not your fault like that way you will try to maintain a proper communication whether the patient is convinced or not you will try your best to convince the patient politely but say apologize uh, apologize the patient again and again though it's not your fault and try to uh, rephrase or paraphrase if the patient doesn't agree with you obviously the patient will not be, be agreed with you but you will have uh explain you need to explain the patient that you have uh, not a common ground we will try to have a common ground so that the thing actually goes on you will have 9 minutes to that and you will uh, there will be no cross question from the examiner and obviously you will completely have the, you will have completely 9 minutes to contact or to communicate with the patient that would be it. here you will uh, the examiner will look for uh, surgical examiner will look for eight marks whether your knowledge is appropriate whether you are giving the medical advice properly and your lay examiner will look for your professionalism how are you building the report and how are you giving the instruction your empathy whether you are using a medical jargon or not those things you will look for and here your lay examiner will contain 12 marks and your surgical examiner will have eight marks opposite to the history taking station here you will have one preparatory station and one performance station 9 of 9 minutes each in both of them 
you know, in preparatory station, there would be no examiner, but in case of platform station, there would be two examiner and one patient. And the thing is, the mark based breakdown, we have discussed this one. Look at here, active listening is the most important thing. Don't interrupt the patient. Whenever the patient stops, you'll give. Don't think about you are running out of time. Always try to give the floor to the patient. Obviously, if you are polite, if you apologize, patient will not talk that much. So that will save your time, obviously. Same empathy and rapport. Another thing is professional conduct. Body gesture. How are you making the conversation? Don't uh, lean backward. Uh, don't act like a robot or expressionless whenever the patient is trying to say something sad. So show that, yes, you are also empathetic to the patient as well. Apologize again and again, if even if it's not your fault. This is one kind of thing, uh, one uh, sample station. The patient come, came to you with the current hernia, hernia and the patient is legally blind. And he needs to stop warfarin to undergo the operation or surgical procedure. So the patient came here that because his cardiologist has said that he must not stop the warfarin pill, otherwise he would die. So ultimately, for this apprehension or for this uh, issue, the patient uh, has come to you to stop this one. So ultimately, in case of blind patient, we have said that the greeting must be on, uh, placing a shoulder, placing a hand over the shoulder of the patient. And then you must give or give a proper explanation how warfarin works, how, what are the instructions to be given, and how warfarin, uh, first you must assess how far the patient actually knows about warfarin, those things. And then you will assess what are the things that you can give or what are the instructions that must be given to stop the warfarin. You already know uh, in our books or in your conventional books, that is already given. But what you will try to focus, don't give a false hope to the patient try to be empathetic professionalism and maintain a scenario of a proper communication a proper conversation that will be it here you will have no conversation with the examiner so most of the candidates feel here that they are contacting with the patient they think that yes i have maintained or i have maintained proper communication i have given all the instruction to the patient properly but they have no idea why they have failed they have no idea because they have uh, lackings in giving the instruction. They have lackings how they delivered the uh, instruction. What was the voice tone or what was the norms of giving the instruction? All of the things will carry marks. Just completing a station will not make you pass. Giving uh, uh, right things in a normal way, like could you have uh, the glass of water? Or can you have the glass of water for me if the patient tries? So the could you please, that is more polite. So these are the things that actually uh, makes a difference between the candidates. And in case of phone call, the same thing, you will have two stations, same as that. You will have uh, one minute here and you will have to spend nine minutes to take the notes from the file of the patient. After that, taking the uh, uh, after nine minutes, the file will be here. You will not be allowed to take the file to the next station. You will be allowed to take the notes, what you have gathered within that particular nine minutes with you. Then with, the, with your own notes, you will come here. Then you will have one minute, then you will enter. Then here, there will be no examiner. Here will also be no examiner. So you will find another table here. The similar file would be here that you have found on the previous station. But sometimes in some of the center, the file are not actually same. So they and um, give that make sure to make sure that whether you have checked the file or not. That is it. But in most of the cases, the files are actually similar. And you will find a land phone and you'll find a number. And you can check the file here after being sure about your data. You can, there will be a number and you can dial the phone. And then examiner will pick the phone 
and obviously just to as a normal communication you must introduce yourself you must tell why are you calling the him and whom are you calling these are the things you will first mention so your name your position your consultant's name another thing is why are you calling whether you are for update for refer or for transfer the patient these are the things and another thing is whom are you talking whether you are calling the right person or not you must confirm these three things at first then if you are confirm about the three, three things then the examiner will ask you tell me what do you have or summarize your case like that then you will make the things in s bar criteria so s bar is the protocol for presenting a case what does s bar stand for s bar means situation just tell the things what has happened to the patient like the patient who has uh, is in first postoperative day or second postoperative day uh, after a uh, hemicolectomy or mastectomy due to carcinoma breast or due to carcinoma colon like that way. this is the situation and the background would be the patient is to why the patient diagnosed these sort of things what was the uh, condition and what are your apprehension this is the thing and assessment it would be vital like what are the physical parameters what are the systemic examination finding major findings then you will ask for the recommendation from the examiner in the s bar method then the examiner will ask you some questions then you will answer by that way like this way all of the questions are given in your book and you will obviously try to answer but the examiner may ask you some irrelevant questions that what was the rbc uh, level what was the creatinine level not irrelevant he uh, he uh, he is asking to you to check your professionalism to check your honesty that is the issue. so ultimately uh, if you are not sure about that what was the creatinine level of the patient so just say that simply that uh, so unfortunately i admit that or uh, i will let you know once i am off the phone or once the conversation is finished like that way. or suppose the creatinine level may not be in the file but the examiner ask you if you say it was not in the file that is that shows the lack of professionalism that indicates you are not well aware of that whatever it is in the file if you are sure about that the creatinine level is this then you will say this but if you are not sure about the value of that and you are not sure about whether the label was given on the file or not just say you will let the consultant know after finishing the conversation that is it and follow the instructions properly what you you have asked whether you are asked to refer or whether you are asked to transfer whether you are asked to update maintain the s bar whenever you are presenting the case then try to answer the questions but don't lie what you don't have and another one is if you can just apologize that sorry sir i don't have the answer right now and i will let you know even if you don't find in the file that is it and here is a station this is, you will find outside the room and you will read this for one minute then you will enter into the station you will find a file for of a uh, file of 10 to 15 pages and if you are not well oriented it will be really difficult to sum up the file within 9 minutes and to gather or to put the information within 9 minutes that would be really difficult if you are not well oriented with the station or well oriented with the file or well ori not or well oriented with the questions so you need to make it so it's proper practice and obviously the practice must be under guidance Yes, here it is. Look at here. You will find 100 marks on anatomy and pathology. That would be completely on your knowledge. And in case of critical care, you will find 4 marks, 12 on your clinical skill. That will also be included in your knowledge, but 12 marks on your professionalism. Among them, you look here, out of 340, 48 marks are on your professionalism and almost 44 marks on your communication. Sorry, here it is. Yes, communication. So ultimately, these are the things you will actually may have to focus. Almost 
uh, out of 340, you will have roughly 100 or 110 marks on your professionalism and communication. So if you don't make it proper with practice, without proper practice, without under supervision, that it would be really difficult to pass. So most of the, in many times, highly knowledgeable person also fail in the exam just because of having having the lackings in the professionalism, how the report is usually have to build, how the how to run a proper communication, how to maintain the professionalism as a surgical candidate. This is the thing where you will have 100 marks and you can get 100 marks almost in between uh, combining these two components just by giving some statements, putting some signposting in your words. Oh, yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. I apologize. Sorry. Just using these words, just having some expression, head nodding, proper gesture, all those things. And remaining things, you will find it in the book that we have in our hands right now. This is it. You will have 160 marks on your knowledge and 180 marks on your skills and you will have to pass separately on knowledge and skills. Okay, so Dr. Difatda, would you like to say something about uh, communication on person and phone call? Yes, uh, Dr. Hasa, thank you very much. Okay, so this is the last segment for the skill part. And uh, literally, uh, I don't have any to, anything to uh, left uh, to discuss with you. Just one thing to mention along with the Dr. Hasna. Uh, just one thing uh, you'll have to remember. The most difficult part of the skill part is the communication. Most difficult part. But whenever a, exam, uh, a candidate uh, appeared his exam and coming back from the exam hall, he won't say it. He won't say you that he uh, communication skill was bad or wa uh, worst or something else. He will he will say you his communication was good. So why it is good uh, to face, but still, I am saying it is the most difficult part because you the there is no one to judge in this station, like in your skill uh, uh, knowledge portion, like in your anatomy station, they're asking you continuously so many questions and you are answering those things. And if you don't, uh, if you can't answer any question, the examiner may push you, the examiner might uh, guide you, but, and if you can answer, still you can answer on those questions in the, uh, uh, in the knowledge portion, you will come to know that your, this particular session was not good. That's totally different. But in the, Communication station, no one is to judge you. Like in the station, you will get three persons in the room, in the person, in the person communication. One person is the uh, your consultant or the surgeon. Another one is layman examiner and another one is your patient. So you are only allowed to talk with the patient in the person communication. Even doctor, uh, even your consultant, even the layman examiner won't talk to you at all. They might talk to you. They might ask you uh, your candidate number. They might ask you, have you read the station? Are you prepared? Those things. But they won't ask you any questions. So you literally simply carry on your communication station. And definitely if it is a cool station, and definitely this, this station will go on. And ultimately they, that will be finished within time. But the two person, one is consultant and another one is the layman uh, examiner. Those two persons are there and they are very closely observing you. What are the things? What are the things you are allowed to do and what are the things you are not allowed to do? And all of these things have been described, Dr. Hasna. They're observing those things. So after doing the station, you might think I have perfect uh, communicated with the patient. I have perfectly counseled the patient. That's totally good, but you don't know what are the mistakes you have done. 
that's why as you are not facing any questions and uh, you are not uh, falling into a troubles that's why you are thinking you this station was really good but if you just simply look at the uh, um, uh, answer uh, and the, in in the result sheet of the candidates who has passed or who hasn't passed you will come to know the lowest mark they got in the part of communication whatever they are getting the lowest mark. Even uh, as uh, I have seen, I have seen some our indie uh, candidates. They passed in the exam, but they got a low mark in the communication station. But they didn't know the communication communication station was bad. So how to acquire mark in these two stations? One thing, Doctor Hazel already said, you will get two prepared stations, particularly two stations. One is person and one another one is phone call and what in the prepared stations you will get 15 pages at least 12 to 15 pages like few uh, case note few referral note few investigations charts and a few uh, uh, referral note I, I have already said and those things will be written in a different format like in the scheme, you can see simply you are looking in the skin, you can very perfectly uh, can read those things. But in the communication stations, while you are preparing, you will come to know those things are written in a italic way, in a very complicated handwriting there. And within 10 minutes, within nine minutes, to make a short note or short case history, uh, from all of the 15 pages, it's very, very, very difficult. So how to pass this station? I always say you will have to practice only seven stations from the uh, communication, person communication, uh, phone call communication, and eight or nine stations from the person communication. And those things are already leaked. These are the leaked question. So you'll have to... Mm -hmm you'll have to go through so many times, particularly these stations. And like one station, you'll get subcapsule hematoma in the person communication. So in this station, you know this is a subcapsule hematoma. So what are the things you'll have to look for? Like there'll be, uh, you will come to know how, how was the accident was. Like the patient went to see for the tennis, uh, tennis game and he accidentally fall on the tears and he has a bruise on the left uh, uh, left side, left loin, or uh, over the uh, ninth and 11 ribs. And there's extra finding, there's a breaking down or fracture in the ninth and 11 ribs. And this is the subcutaneous hematoma. So all the questions are already lit. So you will have to cross check. Are those things are uh, uh, the way those things are written in your book? And is it the uh, play a uh, patient is going for the tennis player or uh, tennis game or not or football is the hemoglobin is dropped by two gram or three gram is there any fracture in the uh, 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 left uh, rib uh, 9 10 and 11 ribs just you'll have to cross check but if you don't have a proper idea proper case history uh, while you are preparing it will be really difficult to prepare within nine minutes in the exam hall so my opinion is to prepare all those things while you are preparing. Just uh, memorize every single thing. What is the case scenario? What is the finding? Wh what is the thing you'll have to look for? And set all of these things st station by station. And while you are preparing, just cross check. Just uh, just uh, turn uh, on the pages and look for what are the findings that are matching with uh, your preparatory stations or not. And if you just practice like this, so you'll get the mark, no problem. And the same thing is applicable for the phone call stations. And phone call stations is really difficult. And one thing I like to say, while you are preparing, you'll have to note down in the paper. But in the prepared, uh, in the in the performing stations, in the phone call, you'll have to dial into a number and you'll talk to with your consultant and the Suddenly, your consultant might ask you, could you tell me the uh, electrolytes level of this patient? And you didn't notice any electrolyte level in the prepared station. So what would be your answer? Like this is a trauma patient. 
increase the trauma patient potassium level increasing is very common due to cell lysis right it's very common and you know it's a very common to raise the potassium level in the trauma patient and you examine ask you could you tell me the potassium level of this patient is it raised or decreased but i would say you i would suggest you don't dare to answer if you don't know the answer if you didn't notice in the question paper in the preparation station please 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 don't answer this thing just say apologize to the concept sir i am sorry i will get back to you uh, i am i will check those thing uh, after uh, the phone call after the phone after i off the phone that's all it's it's not a big deal is you are human you, you are human right it's very common to forget those thing but they are looking for the safe surgeon they are not looking for the li liars so if you don't know it's, it's not a big deal you might get you might forget those thing it's very common but if you are answering without knowing those thing if you are just simply assuming the potassium level is increased it's a big 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 crime guys don't dare to do those things very it's a very important thing those, those thing is uh, notice in the phone call station and definitely they will check you and this thing happens with me even this thing happened with dr hasan or some or some other candidates it's very common to thing to happen of, with all of these guys all of this thing thank you very much guys dr hasan please continue okay thank you so one thing i forgot to say that is in case of maximum communication station whenever you are trying to say or try to discuss a complicated thing with the patient though you are not allowed to say any medical jargon to the patient but uh, whenever you are about to say like uh, you are discussing about ocd or you are discussing about colonoscopy whenever you are discussing or detailing the information just try to make a diagram of that because you will be given a pen and a paper obviously it help it will have some use so if you use those thing uh, to describe uh, by drawing this thing to the patient that will increase your marks on communication because you are having a better communication with the patient and you will have a better understanding with the patient and obviously that suppose in case of the subcapsular hematoma whenever you are trying to explain what is spleen and in that case if you draw a layer, uh some ribs and some uh, shape of an abdomen and locate the spleen where it is located that will enhance your professionalism so whenever you are discussing a difficult thing or medical terms then try to explain it in a layman way and try to draw it whenever you have chance on that and another thing is whenever you are uh, elaborating a very large procedure like piece of a, a ogd and how it is done what are the complications don't give too much information at instance to the patient give one or two lines or statement then ask the patient did you get it or did you understand it if you don't understand then you can ask me again so ultimately uh, give one or two lines then ask the patient whether the patient is uh, has got your points then the positively don't give too many information to the patient so that the patient cannot uh, understand it too okay so the thing is it is so how we can help you in the skill portion that is it we will have 17 live interactive class on skill portions where you will we will uh, discuss every possible skill stations including the new stations like obstructive jaundice your body hip assessment obstructive jaundice in uh, history and clinical examination there are uh, one or two stations that has been added in uh 2024 we will discuss every station by station what are the things to do and what are the things not to do station by station and ultimately after that we will have eight live interactive mocks on that you will perform we will judge you and what are, we will let you know what are the mistakes you have done and what are the things you must do and what are the things you must not do and but station by station we will do, take every station and you will uh, have the feedback on every particular station and obviously after that what are the recalls questions that have been asked apart from the investigation and management and what are the things or what are the review from the recent candidates you will obviously I will let you inform and another thing is 
individual feedback must be given obviously we used to give this one uh, station by station and we will show you how the station actually goes on in the real exam and what are the things because in the skill station you will have the complete control to maintain or you will have the ability to control the environment of the station you will have the chance or you will have the ability that whether the station will go in a good way or in a bad way you will have the control that is the way of the skill station okay so you will have to be the boss of this skill station you will control the room that is it and these are our study materials here you will have one volume that will contain history communication and clinical examination uh, sorry procedure and another volume would be completely on clinical examination station we can assure you that these two books can differ any other things on the available on the market and just you don't have to buy just take a review collect it from uh, your colleagues to see the arrangement the recall questions what are they uh, trying to say then you, you can decide by yourself that is it that is what we can offer you that in case of our regular oski course we have uh, 45 plus that means uh, if there uh, is demand arises we usually increase the number of classes like in our last batch in critical care and pathology we uh, in case of critical care we had to extend we had to take nine critical care classes so that is not thing but at least 45 classes live interactive concept care clearing classes you will have you will have more than 25 live interactive mocks or when or you can participate in any station whatever you want and you can get the feedback and obviously you will have the pdf access via google drive and whenever the next diet is finished there would be obviously some recall questions will be added into the pdfs but you will not have to pay extra because you will have the access to the recall questions and subsequent edition of the book if you are enrolled with us so you will uh, and recording of the classes and mocks and the pdf of the study material will be provided anyway and you will have a complimentary access of the whole recording of all all classes and mocks of the previous batch that is it and you will have lifetime access until you pass so ultimately you can enroll with us whenever you want so you can enroll with pathology during the you can enroll with critical care you can enroll with history whatever it, whenever you want you can enroll with us and you will repeat the course multiple times or as as much time as you can before your preparation and we are 247 available in that close telegram group for your support and the good thing is for the january candidates we are going to arrange a simulation hands on course on 25 cities 7 december in the bonani dhaka in the omni residency and this is the venue and we will try to familiarize the oski course where after the course you will have the problems and mistakes we will try to focus try to develop the fine tuning of your condition or of your skills though skills will not be developed within one day but with the course you will have the skill developed and in the course you will find the the mistakes and you will get the real exam environment whenever you are this is the thing and real exam hacks would be provided in the course as well as simulation course as well but you will have the live in person communication in person chance to practice and will get the will will be able to sort out the mistakes what are the mistakes you have been done throughout your examination history procedure whatever it is and we will also discuss about the knowledge stations those are the things and ultimately this will boost your confidence of the exam and for our foreign candidates uh, those they will also have the special benefits if they visit our country obviously they are our guest and obviously you will have the chance of practicing immensely on those three days 
and you will be given all the necessary kits possible for all 24 clinical examination station you will be given all the kits mannequins including catheter including knot time including chest dummy everything else you will be provided abscess nevus suture pad everything else in your simulation course and every examination instrument would be provided with that just you need to have your sound body and mind and your concentration in the course that is it for the fine tuning and for the perfection these course are usually arranged nothing else and everything you provide will be returned as your instrument your food your venue and your ambience with the enthusiastic participants who are giving you the chance of having immense practice under the expert guidance and excellence a special hand note will be provided for the clinical examination history and procedural station where you will have some tips and tricks and you can enroll with us in the simulation course even if you don't uh, even if you are not enrolled with our course you can join anytime any uh, and then obviously balance and unlimited snacks and teas. So, Dr. Richard, would you like to say something about our course and our simulation course? Yes, uh, Dr. Hassel, thank you very much. So, guys, uh, uh, every single thing has been discovered, Dr. Hassel, and nothing is uh, new to tell you. Uh, just, uh, it's a six months journey of excellence for MRCS, and we have already to do two candidates have passed for uh, in the uh, MRCS OSCE in the with diets. And we we are doing uh, Alhamdulillah uh, good. And uh, the candidates, definitely the candidates who have passed from us, they will say the review. Uh, just before finishing, I would like to answer one question that is Dr. Kinan Safwan. He asked me 10 or 20 is passing mark for the uh, sessions. Okay. Uh, so for the uh, no skill part, I told you, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Kinner, I think you are listening to me. So for the skill part, your uh, pass mark is or safest mark is hundred twenty five, and I told you the pass mark varies from the hundred eighteen to uh, hundred eighteen to hundred twenty. So have a look. You have nine stations. You will have nine stations, and if you get 13 every single station so your mark would be 117 so this is not the safest mark so if you get 13.5 for the nine stations your mark will be the 121 it is it is still not the safest mark but if you get and uh, if you get 14 marks for every single stations that will be 126 and this is the safest mark so i think for acquiring the safest mark you'll have to get average 14 questions, 14 marks for the every single uh, questions or every single stations. That's all. Thank you, guys. So who are preparing right now, I am uh, telling you uh, from the fourth of this month, we are going to start our course with the skill part and who are preparing the March or uh, uh, August, September, those candidates are highly, highly, highly benefited, will be benefited because skill part is the main thing that we'll have to deal because maximum candidates will fail in the skill part. So if you start your preparation right now and you will be done with your preparation at the end of uh, at the first week of the December, but after uh, and the last week of the December, so we'll get 15 days gap. And the last week of December, we'll start, we'll have our simulation course, like 30 candidates participate in the last session. And this simulation course will be conducted for a long three days, 25th, 6th, and 7th, uh, 27th December. And if you start your preparation right now, you'll be done with your course with the first week of December and we'll get 15 days gap and we'll have the simulation course at the end of the December. That means it's a, it will be a complete package. It's a, it will be a very easy to learn every single thing and you will have your preparation of the skill part at first. 
after that from january we will start our knowledge part again so while you are preparing for the knowledge part you will able to practice your skill as well but when we start your preparation with the knowledge part uh, it's very difficult to habituate it, to know the skill part and to prepare the or practice the skill part along with the knowledge part it's, it's very difficult but as you are starting your preparation with the skill part so it would be very very easier for you to practice skill as well along with the knowledge from the january the greatest opportunity i think so thank you guys and one thing uh, dr hasnath and uh, uh, me working so hard for make this course fruitful and the result already been uh, visualized in front of you so many candidates are passing from our course and if you do if you have a look on our group you will come to know and how successful alhamdulillah we are so one thing money only a big barrier between us because we don't always we are not that much professional we don't uh, focus on the money just we are charging that is logical for you and definitely are not charging at all uh, and it's very very affordable other than other uh, online recorded uh, courses so if you are interested just feel free to ask us so many candidates are joining from the facebook uh, and definitely if you do any queries don't hesitate to knock me dr hasnath as well as our support so thank you very much guys if you do have any question i would like to say dr ridoy apu dr ratna dr kinan if you do have any questions just uh, let us know and anyone in the from the facebook because there are almost 700 or 800 candidates who has visited our view the uh, page and if you do have any question please let us know uh dr ratna do you have any question no bhaiya thank you okay, okay. so if you do have any confusion just let us know dr kinan do, do you have any question thanks thanks very much this was okay, uh, very clear Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. And Dr. Ridhapo, do you have any question? No, Bhaiya. Thank you so, so much. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for your active participation. I think we have uh, we, we tried our level best to complete every single thing, to make the whole scenario, to bring the whole scenario in front of you. And thank you very much, Dr. Hasnath, to make this presentation for your tremendous effort to... Uh, making all of this thing very easier and crystal clear for and presenting in front of us. Thank you very much, Dr. Hasnath. So, okay, thank guys, you. So, if there session. is no question, then we can finish. But if you have question, you can let us in our Telegram group. We will hopefully try to answer or we will try our best to support. Thank you, everyone.